everyone. It's been a while since we've just kind of sat face to face, huh? So, today's a little bit of a different look. We did like kind of a new wave old school Yaru type of thing. Yes, I'm wearing Alba. <laughs> what are we thinking? I feel like this is like the most extra because of the bling. Um, but also the trashiest I've ever like, felt. Like, this is the type of outfit I feel like, like, that you go to, like, sit the guy and, like, squat in a side alley with your girls and, like, you have your phone open, and, like, your flip phone open, and you just gossip while you wait for, like, the clubs on Dokunzaka to open so you can crawl to the club with your bitches. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good like analogy for this outfit, but I seriously feel like it's like one of those outfits. Please don't mind the mess. There's wires because there's this light, those lights, uh, this light, and the projector, and I watch movies pretty regularly, so sorry about that. It's how it is, and it's also like daylight out, so I have a little bit of a background, but this is gonna be a chatty gal video, so I don't think lighting is as important as it usually would be. So today, speaking of old school gal and like gal stereotypes, I thought I would talk about gal in anime and manga for you like fucking weebs out there. I'm gonna give you some recommendations like from a gal for gals or for people who like gal because some of y'all like some stuff that's just no <laughs> no god please no no i have my trusty laptop in front of me because i have to have some references to character names and things like that because it's been a while since i've read some of these but yeah i'm going to talk about manga today now i want to talk about the difference between the stuff i'm going to recommend and some of those things that you guys see as like gyaru like the whole ko gyaru big titty like anime girls like that's not really that is the otaku's stereotype of gyaru um whereas what i'm going to recommend um the people in this just happen to be gal or have a very like tokyo fashion influence type of style but like they the whole series doesn't like revolve around them being gal they just happen to be um that or their style is inspired by. So, if that's not your thing, go back to your like big titty anime girls. But if you want like proper recommendations from a gal, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> and I just want to note that like, obviously I can recommend super gals, but like I feel like that's a default. Everybody knows about super gals, which is why I haven't really added super gals onto my list like to say before I recommend some of these mangas I just want to put out like a word of warning not all of these are really cute shoujo -y or like fluffy BL mangas that I'm about to recommend some of them are but some of them aren't um, so definitely read summaries and like I guess go by your best judgment because some of them do deal with mental health issues and prostitution and sexual assault and suicide and just on and on and on or just very sexually explicit so if that's not your thing um these aren't the mangas for you so i know a lot of you are going to ask why manga and not anime um so the thing with anime is that like the clothes don't change a lot in anime versus like manga where a lot of real brands can almost be referenced in real places and real music i just find that manga is a little bit more like real life or authentic versus anime um anime i just yeah i just don't feel like it's the same thing so yeah that's that's why there's a uh, manga recommendations other than anime however some of these recommendations that i'm about to give you guys do have j dramas some of them got so popular that they have like live actions of them so i highly recommend them so the first thing i have on my list is kekasui nobu's life um so Tsunobu Sensei is notorious for doing mangas about bullying and mental health and things like that um so trigger warning, there's a lot of like risky subjects in her stuff, um, but the main premise is um, that there's this character who ends up getting to a school that her best friend wanted to go to, and 
they wanted to stick together but they're separated the friends pretty spiteful about it and they're not friends anymore and so the main character Ayumu has a hard time fitting in and this goes in the mean girls <laughs> direction and Ayumu being at a new school knowing no one because she had mainly had gone just because her friend was going um ends up getting adopted by the school mean girls um so this goes kind of in a mean girl direction um and the villain is just yahoo as fuck manami anzai is the evilest bitch like she she makes regino george look like a fucking angel okay um but she's very kogyaru and like even her style outside of school is very gal she's kind of the the villain of the story unfortunately she is that bully um stereotype she is gal in there and it's just a really really interesting s series i really like it so if you like like psychological mangas or ones that take place in school that are kind of slice of life but a bit darker um i definitely recommend life and life is also so big that it actually got a j drama series that i was actually following when it first came out so it was like almost torturous because i knew what was going to happen but like i was like "Ooh, are they still gonna do this in the drama um and manami still kind of has that kogal fill and everything um lots of communication through cell phones things like that um so if you don't like the manga format or have a hard time finding it try to find the j drama the j drama is just as good i i really like it and i think mika nakashima does the uh opening for like okay so another kind of dark uh series i don't recommend reading this one if you're sad uh because this will fuck up your night <laughs> uh as it did mine this also got so big that it got a J drama and the series is called deep love and each manga focuses in on a different character so the first character's name is ayu and she's a kogyaru and she does like in kosai so like she's pimped i don't know if she's pimped out by her boyfriend or she started doing paid dating and it went too far but basically she doesn't give a fuck about her life anymore um she's like a troubled teen basically and she ends up um i don't want to say getting taken in by like a old granny and stuff and a dog like she she gets invested in like taking care of a dog and and things like that but uh deep love will fuck you up um yeah ayu and Dana, who are um best friends and they have their own separate mangas are kogyaru in this and then there is kagami which is like the love interest guy and um he ends up becoming a host so this definitely has a lot of like dark gyaru undertones i super recommend deep love and like I said, there's a J drama as well. Just a reminder, like I said, these people just happen to be like Gal or Gal inspired, um, but the series don't revolve around Gyaru in that way. There's not many series that do. Um, but the next one I'm gonna recommend is from the 90s and it's by a very famous mangaka called Iwatase. Um, most people know her for Fushigi Yugi, which is like the shoujo version of Inuyasha in my opinion. But the one I'm going to recommend is Ayashi no series, or I think in English it's called Series A Celestial Legend. Um, it's from the 90s, uh, Aya and Aki are twins, Aya is super kogal, and um, it's a really dark story. Basically, uh, their family on their 17th birthday takes them to the relatives that they don't see very often separate her from her twin and basically try to kill her because i guess she's an incarnation of an angel that tried to kill aki who's a reincarnation of something else and it's it's just a crazy ass story <laughs> namie amuro is refer in that manga um that's how i got into namie because she was made such a huge deal uh before shit hits the fan <laughs> uh they go to karaoke and just do typical like school kid things but like aya wears like the loose socks and everything and like has like the middle parted hair this like i said i think this was made in like 96 97 so yeah i i find that she's definitely cool gal so another series that actually does revolve around gal is a series called kensopa uh kensopa if you like super gals kensopa is the more agajo 
gaggy version of Supergals, in my opinion. Same premise with, like, a girl that has to become a detective and do good deeds around Sibia and stuff because um, the person that she likes works for the police and stuff. But Beauty Cole and her gang of friends are like, they have the biggest hair and the longest Venus flytrap lashes ever. I love Kim Soba so much. It's actually scandalated by, I think, somebody who did like a Yami no Matsui fanfiction that I religiously followed that was never like finished. So, uh, Lightbird, please, for the love of God, finish your fanfiction. Please finish. Are there other scans of Ken Sopa too? Because it just suddenly just stopped. Like, finish what you started. You have me in love in, in two completely different directions here. <laughs> okay, so the next one I'm going to share with you guys is one that I mentioned on a previous video. Um, but it's a pretty good one and it's got a little bit of like everything in regards to J fashion uh, and it's called Oh Hello. Now Oh Hello is definitely what first got me into J fashion pretty heavily. I was just like oh there's Lita in this, oh there's Visual K in this, like oh my god it's like very 90s style uh, VK. When Yaya, first off, Yaya does wear like the big platform shoes and stuff and it like the manga takes place in 1999 so um, her friends are probably like cool gal as well and similarly to life it deals with bullying um, but not, it's, it's definitely not as dark as life is but oh hello talks about like basically split personalities and stuff because uh Yaya is very traumatized and has an alternate personality called Nana and Nana stands up for herself and like is just an entirely different person from like Yaya like Nana is what Yaya wants to be um but Nana when she like is Nana uh Nana dresses very gal like um there's a little bit of like everything honestly like I know super lovers is shown in that manga but there's other like jeans and like the hair and stuff that's very like get it in my opinion i super recommend this manga especially if you're into j fashion in general like it, it's just an overall really underloved manga it deserves more love than what it gets um, and it's one of the few things that actually does you know have a j fashion premise and kind of includes a little bit of everything the next manga i'm going to recommend is ageha 100 but this follows the story of a girl named ren who's like super nerdy and like backward and everything like the most unsuspecting person ever but she's actually taking on her mother's legacy of becoming this legend of the school called ageha um when she turns into ageha like she throws contacts in it lashes she's very very gal um, and like very like Agajoy type of gal, right? But in like a cool gal way. I don't know how to explain it, like the makeup's heavier. Um, but she basically ends up making over girls that aren't very confident in obtaining their dreams. Um, some of it revolves around helping girls be made over so they can confess to the boy they like, for example, or um, being able to fit in in a specific way. I think the school bans makeup, but like a lot of the girls there realize that like it gives them like confidence it makes them feel really, like really empowered and like powerful and more so able to um face their fears because the uh, like makeup's almost considered like an armor of some sort uh it's a really cute manga i really really enjoy it a lot so the next manga i'm going to recommend um, not to be confused with Ageha 100%, this manga is called Ageha and it tells with two best friends who kind of have a bit of a rivalry going on. Um, it's not said exclusively but basically they're both trying to model for pop teen and one gets in and the other doesn't and like there's like love interest is a very like typical shoujo -y manga but it's basically overcoming that jealousy of one another and a lot of like the clothes definitely look very pop teen k very Liz lisa e like i said it's never referenced but it, it's there they just happen to be gal um or inspired by gal in some type of way so the next manga i'm going to recommend is near and dear to my heart and you will know this mangaka for creating sailor moon this is naoko takeuchi and the manga is tokimeka I adore Tokimeka. I think it's one of the last series that 
she put out um, before she just stopped writing manga altogether, like drawing, creating manga. Um, and I entirely wish it had like an anime. It deserves an anime. I think it's complete. Um, though if you try to find it online, I think the chapters are how to order. So I, I think this, if you go on the actual Scanlator site, um, they're in order, but I think on like the aggregator sites and stuff it's not but toki mecca revolves around these two best friends who end up getting separated at childhood and one of them is really good at like creating things super sciencey and the other is you know really clumsy kind of a tomboy and stuff and she's like what am i gonna do without my best friend like i don't know if i'll ever have friends and her friend tells her don't worry you'll find a friend one day cues to them being older um and the clumsy girl has kind of long forgotten about this promise and runs into this very eccentric princessy girl who ends up being a like robot and her goal is to have a bunch of different phone numbers of different people in her like little princessy ketai cell phone because all of those people will be her friends like she wants to make as many friends as possible while she's in tokyo despite her being a robot um, and her name is hanagori mecha so she's like the super princessy like hime gyaru one and it almost kind of feels like, um, oh my god, what is that clamp series where the robots battle each other? Somebody tell me. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, watch me figure out like after I finish this video. But it kind of feels like that, but like super human getty. And I love it to death. Like, if there's any manga series you need to read, it is that one. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is Ayazawa for just like a little bit. And I know this is kind of controversial because I remember Adama doing an article on like Gyaru manga and things and like <laughs> Nana being included and people being like, eh, Nana's not really Gyaru safe for her sister Nami. The thing about Nana is, Nana at least, is that Hachi is a woman of many faces and in her high school days she was absolutely cool gal and i think as she grew older like she kind of went for like the zipper look and then like the tokyo girl look like i don't know how to explain how she dresses um when she meets nana it's very like retro looking but also retro was kind of big and yaru as well so it's kind of debatable like whether you consider her gal or not because it's not the islandy looking stuff that her younger sister does um, it's more refined, more onesan looking. She could potentially be gal, like one of those girl, like girl groupies that goes to lives and dresses like really cute and stuff. Like I know how she dresses, but it's hard to explain to other people because people's interpretation of gal is like one thing when it's kind of many in a sense. And I feel like Nami is inspired by Nana or Hachi. Uh, because obviously Nana was Kogyaru back in the day and then her sister obviously turns into like Mamba Ya Mamba, right? Like super tanned. Um, and that had the stem from somewhere and I feel like it's because she looked up to her sister. So there is that. There's also Kagenosuke, which is very, very underloved. Um, it's one of the more underloved mangas of Ayazawa's. Uh, I, I really like that one. It deals with like mysteries and ghost stories and a haunted house and everything But the main character is definitely Kogyaru. She wears the loose socks and everything and it's very like 90s style In English it's called Last Quarter and there's even a movie but the movie the The, the main character Mizuki in the movie definitely isn't get it but in the manga she is in the movie I think it has uh, What is her name? Chaki something um, she's well known, I should know. She was in <laughs> Kill Bill, I think. Um, but she's in it, and Hyde from Luck and Seal is also in it. He plays Adam. It's a really good Ayazawa series. Super recommended, um, especially like around Halloween time. I recommend reading this one. Like I said, it doesn't really revolve around Yeru so much. It just so happens to be that Mizuki looks very Kogao. She has that Kogao look. Content warning from here on out. Stuff isn't shoujo or jose anymore. It is straight up BL and yaoi. So if that's not your thing, hope you enjoyed my shoujo and jose gyaru recommendations. You can exit out of the video now or skip to like the end of this. But if you're really into like BL and yaoi, here you go. I I I got them for you. <laughs> and it's I'm not gonna be recommending the one that everybody I think is gonna think I recommend because that one is garbage. <laughs> no. Oh, hey,
Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna recommend, I think, the first one that I always recommend to people because, like, Saya is exclusively Gedul in this, and, like, 109 Men's is even featured in it, like, close from 109 Men's. And it is this manga called Neon Sign Amber by Ogoretsu Tanaka, and just, oh, it's so good. You guys mainly know her for um, the Photography Club Sex what? Club one, which, I mean, what is wrong with you What guys? the fuck? <laughs> I hate that one, but I do like Escape Game. But um, Neon Sign Amber is like the holy grail. That is mine. Clearly, she has a type. Like, so clearly the manga ka has a type and I can see it. <laughs> Sai is so adorable and this manga is really really wholesome in the sense that it talks about uh, discovering one's sexuality like the characters kind of coming to realization of whether they're gay or not and what exactly that means and the repercussions of that. Uh, Saya basically goes to clubs to pick up girls kind of as like a front but he's been gay the whole time and Yusuke keeps getting dumped by girls because he has kind of a bitchy looking face so like girls can't really read him very well but Saya is able to but Saya being the gyaruol he is is so irresponsible like he like loses his locker key and tells Yusuke to help him out. And Yusuke's like, yeah, I'll go help you and stuff. And Saya's like, I can't pay you money because I keep wanting to go to the club because that's how that works. Um, so he wagers with him, hey, I can make you really good breakfast after your shift for like a month or so. Like the amount of money that it would take to repay for the key. And Yusuke's like, okay. And so he ends up having breakfast with Saya and ends up getting very emotionally attached to him, but he's not sure whether or not he's capable of like romantically liking him or not. Like I said, it's a really wholesome manga. It's really, really good. Um, I super recommend it. It's, it's one of my top favorite BLs out of all the BLs. So the next one I'm going to recommend is kind of fucking wild like the end is really wholesome but the beginning of this manga is just <laughs> uh, it's called kichiku and count and the one like host rental boyfriend dude is like tanned and like super masculine kind of like men's knuckle oni k type um, of guy and he, he ends up kind of bullying a like really cute salary man who he ends up kind of growing attached to. Um, I don't know how to explain this without it being like crazy but basically <laughs> he hasn't been able to like really commit to his job as a rental boyfriend or like have sex so I guess his co-workers recommend him porn and <laughs> he accidentally doesn't have the headphones in and so the, the cute little salary man's like oh god like what are you doing oh no especially because it's like a, a girl he's like a fan of <laughs> and <laughs> it happens to be that the host rental boyfriend guy has the same night same like first name as the porn star <laughs> But, like, the rental boyfriend doesn't realize when he's bullying this guy and, like, basically low-key taking responsibility for uh, said salary man's problem <laughs> that they had the same name. So it's, like, a really strange, like, beginning. But then the, the rest of the manga is kind of cute. You know, like, he ends up being, like, a really good boyfriend to the guy and, like, takes care of him when he's sick. All, all the typical things. Has a little brother he's taking care of, so he's not as evil as he seems. So yeah, I, I recommend that one. That one's, like I said, kind of wild. But if you're into that type of thing... Okay, so the next one <laughs> is also slightly kind of wild. Also deals with host. All of these are basically nightlife, nightlife workers at this point. And it's called The Beast is Currently Being Broken In, and it deals with a host who basically um, overexerts and likes talking to this one hairstylist that he gets his hair studs from, um, who is very openly gay. And um, the guy, I forget what exactly happens, but basically the hairstylist propos propositions him like, hey, like, if you're not feeling with other people, feel free, like, I'm open, I'm down for everything, um, for anything, like, especially with you, and, like, they end up doing it, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, like, I usually don't go for seconds, but if you wanted to, like, come by again, come by again, and they end up getting, like, emotionally attached, it's really, like, 
interesting. There's also a VK in that. Um, the hairstylist has like a best friend who's like in a band, and it's it's interesting. <laughs> Some BL mangas that I can think of off the top of my head that I don't have to reference from that kind of have like a gyaru gyaru aesthetic vibe, Jake fashion y vibe. Uh, the first one is by the same mangaka that did Okanegenai. I don't really don't care for like Okanegenai at all, but um, there's a side story that has to do with Okanegenai called Henshin Dekinai, and it deals with like a, a Yankee. <laughs> And the mama san of a club that like is a cross dressing club and he dresses gorgeous. He he he's basically like a hostess at that point, like hair sets and everything, really pretty anasui style makeup and, and clothes with like spider webs and everything. Looks very sakurai vina y, but I just think it's cute because <laughs> Like, he's really refined, and then here's this fucking Yankee with his Bosasoku style cars and shit, but he's like deep down a really good boyfriend. It's kind of gaggy, but like, I really like it, and it does kind of have like that Gyaru vibe, strangely enough, even though it's two guys. The next manga I'm going to recommend, I like to call the fucked up version of Given because it's by Harada, surprise, surprise. Um, I think it's called Asa ni Yoru something. Like, I, if you look it up or look up Harada, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, the main characters on Gyaru all at all, like, they're just bam men. <laughs> like, and they're not even like VK bam men. They're like, I don't even know how to explain what type of bam men they are. But basically, the manga focuses in on like the fact that, like, Here's this band and they have this substitute guitarist who has this big reputation of being a huge vocalist in another band that like disbanded. And so a lot of their fans come from that previous band and everybody's like, I don't know why this guy's singing when this guy's so much better because he was part of this previous band. And of course the main guy who's like the vocalist is like, fuck this guy. I hate this guy. Like he just steals all my shine and stuff. So he kind of like low key hates him, but like the guitarist joined because well he likes this guy and stuff but the reason why I recommend this one is because uh one of the side characters that ends up being like a band groupie like a bangya is a kyabajo like she's a hostess and she does all the cute little hair sets and everything and goes with her friends to like the concerts and stuff pretty frequently so she shows up quite a bit but um Definitely she works in nightlife, probably has that like Gyaru vibe, she even has like a big ass handbag and stuff. And she kind of plays an important role, so if you're into that type of thing, definitely check out that manga by Harada. And there has been my manga recommendation for you guys, from a gal to other gals or for other people who are interested in Gyaru but maybe want series that have like a storyline that goes beyond just being Gyaru that like actually has other things because I think a lot of people forget that like Gyaru have other interests like this is just how they happen to dress and yeah they go to clubs and they do this that and the other but there's other things that they're into um even me there's other things I'm obviously interested in other than just Gyaru um and that applies to manga and storylines as well. But I hope those were enjoyable for you guys. I hope you guys check some of them out. Some of them are really, really fun and series that I have genuinely enjoyed over time. So this will be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with me. I apologize that it's been so long since I've made a video. Oh, uh, life has been happening, but um, I'm hoping to make more videos real soon, so just stay tuned. Thank you guys. Until next time.